Hey, I don't put out new videos very often. Main reason for that is I don't want to regurgitate the same stuff that can be found elsewhere on YouTube. I like to keep things fresh and creative. For instance, my first Aptera video on my other channel, Hammer Time, uploaded about three years ago, already sums up the content of most current info about the company uh, that the average consumer would care about outside of the partnership with CPC Group. I didn't even want to make this video because I know Steve from Aptera Owners Club could do it a hell of a lot better than me, so hopefully he does a response to this. I'm great at conceptualizing base logic, but applying complicated mathematical formulas to support my thesis isn't really my forte, not in engineering at least currently. People often talk about the efficiency of Aptera, but something nobody ever seems to talk about is how well an Aptera could be able to coast at highway speed with regenerative braking completely disengaged. Many people think that always using regenerative braking is the most efficient method for driving an EV, but that is not always the case. Regenerative braking works best during stop-and-go traffic, and since you have to slow the vehicle down anyways, you might as well get some energy back by using regenerative braking while also extending the life of your brakes, which for an Aptera you'll most likely never have to replace your brake pads or rotors. The LFA radial flux hub motors that Aptera uses are capable of really strong regenerative braking, and that will be a setting that owners will be able to utilize when appropriate. However, on the highway, it has been proven that regenerative braking can create a net loss in efficiency, especially the more aerodynamic a vehicle is. I've argued this before, and recently I watched a video about a Fisker Ocean driver who explained how he won a challenge to get the most range out of his vehicle, and he highly stressed the point that he needed regen to be as little as possible to achieve the feat. The deceleration curve of a vehicle with extremely good aerodynamics is really long, and you don't want anything to take away from that. The mathematical formulas come in when you try to decipher the exact deceleration curve of an Aptera, uh, going at, let's say, 80 miles per hour on the highway, given its 0.13 drag coefficient and stellar performance versus crosswinds. I am not certain we have enough information to properly calculate this, but I theorize that an Uptera can let off the pedal at 80 miles per hour and naturally decelerate to 60 miles per hour in the course of one mile or slightly more, while also gaining solar charge along the way. So, precisely how much energy is being used to propel an Uptera back from 60 miles per hour to 80 miles per hour to repeat the process? And how much energy is being restored to the battery from solar during that period of coasting, assuming no extra stuff is turned on, like the radio or air conditioning. Some people foolishly think this is an illogical exercise, but to illustrate this point, Lightyear has already done this test with their Lightyear 1. My somewhat random numbers for Aptera were thought of before I remembered this video that they created which puts things in better perspective. Lightyear is almost a perfect comparison because they also use LFA radial flux hub motors customized to their needs, the same supplier as Aptera. The question of whether these motors can be completely disengaged to allow for zero region whatsoever is answered by this video and for Aptera to implement this is just a matter of the software control system settings. In the video, the Lightyear one was able to coast from 62 miles per hour down to 37 miles per hour over the course of one mile, representing a loss of just 25 miles per hour while generating solar energy over that mile. I imagine that an ultra aerodynamic vehicle moving at 80 miles per hour while inherently having a sharper deceleration curve than traveling at slower speeds, given that the starting speed is 20 miles per hour faster, the rate at which you achieve a mile is also faster, making it very conceivable than an Aptera could meet or exceed my previous estimates. A loss of 20 miles per hour versus 25 miles per hour with the light year one, with the substantial difference in drag figures accounting for the difference in the general deceleration curve at speed. Bear in mind that the light year one has a drag coefficient of 0 0.175 versus the even more amazing 0 0.13 drag coefficient of Aptera. We don't know the final number for Aptera's coefficient of drag, but given Aptera's laser focus on efficiency and what has been said in the past, Aptera will likely meet or improve upon the 0 0.13 drag in the production version. And why do I focus on going from 80 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour instead of starting from 60? Because when you're on the highway in many countries, you don't really want to be driving less than 60 miles per hour unless there's a lot of traffic, which already screws up your ability to coast anyways. That said, Aptera's touted efficiency of 10 miles 
per kilowatt hour, 100 watt hours per mile, is not based on 80 miles per hour. It's based on driving at a substantially slower speed, like 55 miles per hour or less. However, Aptera's range figures do not take into account the energy gained from solar while driving. If Aptera makes it possible for you to be able to toggle regenerative braking on and off easily from the steering half yoke, then you'd be able to instantly go from zero regen to strong regen, which is the best of both worlds when driving on the highway. My Chevy Volt already has this feature in the form of pedal regen. Aptera has indeed stated that there will be multiple regenerative braking options, but hasn't yet talked publicly about entirely disengaging it. So... How many watt hours per mile would an Aptera use, taking everything into account, if driving up to 80 miles per hour and coasting down to 60 miles per hour before accelerating back to 80 miles per hour again? I know that in most cars, coasting on the highway is something you can only do for a couple of seconds before you're moving about as slow as a child's bicycle with training wheels, but with an Aptera, it's a realistic and interesting concept for those who want to win a prize for being the cheapest bastard alive or for folks who just like to experiment with stuff. You're already spending only about a penny per mile if you're driving an Aptera in the first place, or possibly zero cents per mile if you drive less than 40 miles a day. Either way, it's an interesting topic, and many of you Aptera supporters are engineers, so comment below. I'm interested to know what you think. Also, go ahead and like and subscribe, and if you want to reserve an Aptera, please use my link in the description to get a $30 discount on your reservation. Once Sora AI gets released, I'll probably be uploading far more often. Until next time, have a good one.